What's going on guys, it's CTA Prime back here again. Today I wanted to pair the AMD 200GE $55 APU with an $800 EVGA 2080 XC Ultra. Basically what I want to do is see if I can get some of my favorite games and emulators to run at 4K 60fps or higher with this dual core APU and the 2080 here. But I am going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to overclock the 200GE to 3.9 GHz. Now that's as high as I've been able to get this thing. Base clock is 3.2, we can overclock both cores to 3.9, and it works out pretty well that way. A little rundown on the specs before we get started here. Like I mentioned, we're using the EVGA 2080 XC Ultra. This is a 3-slot card, 8GB of GDDR6. It's a monster. The motherboard I'm going to be using is the Gigabyte GAAB350N. It does support Ryzen 2 with the correct BIOS installed. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. And I have 16 gigabytes of Corsair LPX DDR4, 2400 megahertz, but I am overclocking to 2666. Now, even though I'm overclocking this APU to 3.9 gigahertz, I'm still going to be using the stock heatsink. It seems to be fine. We're not going to hit that thermal throttle, and I seriously wouldn't worry about the heat with a $55 APU. The stock heatsink will handle this overclock with decent airflow. As for the case, this is just a cheap Predator case I got on Amazon years ago. I've been using it without the side panels as a test bed. And finally, the power supply. This is an EVGA 600B. It's a 600 watt, inexpensive power supply. It's non-modular. And before anybody starts posting in the comments, 600 watts with the APU and the 2080 is plenty. This APU fully overclocked is gonna pull a maximum of 40 watts. And the GPU itself is only gonna pull a maximum of 290 watts. And we're not even gonna get there with this system. I also have this all plugged into a kilowatt meter. So by the end of this video, we're gonna find out what this whole system will pull. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I'm using the built-in NVIDIA, I guess it's called Shadow Play, to record this, and that does take GPU power to do, especially at 4K. And the whole system is plugged into a 4K LG 43-inch display. It looks great here. So let's get right into it. Personally, I'm not a big fan of benchmark graphs. I like to see the game playing in real time, and that's what I'm going to do in this video. First up, we have one of my favorite games, Overwatch. So I understand that Overwatch is a very optimized game. I've been able to run this on a lot of my mini PCs very well. I mean, low settings, but you know, at 60 FPS. But here we are, 4K Ultra preset, and I did turn the scaling up to 100% because I think at Ultra it defaults to about 84%. By the end of this match, I was averaging around 99 FPS. This is more than playable. I don't mind turning VSync on and just having this at a steady 60. With each one of these games you're about to see, I will have Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner. That way we can see the GPU and the CPU usage. We can also see the FPS, Minimum, Maximum, and Average. Here's Forza Horizon 4. I'm just running the benchmark here. This is going to give us a good idea of how it'll perform. And I was really impressed with the results. I actually did go in and play a little bit also. Ultra settings achieved 66 FPS. Now with the ultra settings, this is just a preset here. We're at 4K, MSAA is set to two, and if we turn that down, we could get a little more out of it. But overall, this setup will run Forza at 4K ultra settings. Here's Fortnite. You can see the settings I'm using here. I did have to mix it up a little bit between epic and high to achieve a decent frame rate. It's going to average around 74 to 73 FPS, but you will see some dips down into the 50s. It's kind of unnoticeable. Um, I would just turn VSync on and leave it at 60. I was actually really surprised at how good Fortnite looks in 4K. PUBG, 4K, high settings, not a very well optimized game. We're averaging around 50 FPS here, but I do see some dips down into the 30s when stuff's loading in the background. Rocket League 4K high quality settings, so it's maxed out. Again, 
I was super surprised at how good this looks in 4K. The game looks absolutely amazing. By the end of this match, I was averaging around 96 FPS, which is more than playable. CSGO 4K totally maxed out. I was pretty sure it was going to run it just fine. I had to do it, GTA 5, 4K, high settings, we just can't achieve that steady 60 FPS with this setup. And it all comes down to that CPU. I've tested this on a lot of hardware and the CPU is a really important part of this game. We have almost maxed it out and in most cases it does max out that CPU. I think if the 200GE had two more physical cores making it a real quad core CPU, we could do that 60 here. Man, that's dumb luck right there. Moving over to some 4K emulation, this is the Dolphin emulator running Soul Calibur 2 for GameCube. We're totally maxed out in 4K, no stutters, no drops, constant 60 FPS, and the game looks beautiful in 4K. Fight. 4K PS2 emulation using PC SX2 1.5. This is Gran Turismo 4. Super smooth and the game looks great. Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. It's as close as I can get to 4K in the settings and it looks great. I could even go up a little bit, but you're really not even going to notice a difference. And finally, 3DS using Citra. This is at 8x resolution. It's right there at 4K. It looks phenomenal for being a 3DS game. And just a heads up, the 200GE overclocked the 3.9 gigahertz with the built-in Vega 3 graphics. Can't do this at 40 FPS at native resolution. I measure power consumption at the wall using a kilowatt meter. While I was gaming, 293 watts. And to get any higher than that, I had to run Prime 95 and then start up 3D Mark Time Spy. And the max this system was pulling from the wall was 334 watts. So can the dual core 200GE paired with an RTX 2080 game at 4K? Well, the answer is kind of. So overall, I'm really impressed with this setup. Now, this isn't something I'm going to use every day. This is more of an experiment. But it does prove that you can achieve some decent frame rates with a 200GE and a higher end graphics card. So let's say you started out with the 200GE, it's got that built-in Radeon Vega 3 GPU, and you want a little more out of it. Just hop on eBay, buy an RX 580, even a 570 will do, and you'll get some decent frame rates at 1080p. If you want to step it up a notch, go ahead and save up some cash and buy an RTX 2060 or even a used 1070 on eBay. But I think one of the best benefits of starting out with a 200GE is the ability to upgrade the CPU later on down the road. The motherboard you start out with needs to be Ryzen 2 compatible, and that's an AM4 socket. There are a ton of chips on the second hand market right now, the first generation Ryzen's and even the second generation Ryzen's that are much more powerful than this. 
So if you're on a budget and you want to incrementally upgrade your system down the road, I think the AM4 platform is perfect for you. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I got a couple used builds coming up. I got a couple new builds coming up. So keep an eye on the channel if you're interested in seeing more. And like always, thanks for watching.